Hello everyone. So, who needs to solve climate change? Lately, so far, it's mostly been people who are buying EVs, uh, putting solar panels on their roofs. But the biggest action, or better said, inaction, comes from governments around the world and they really need to be held accountable. So what can an individual or a group of individuals do about this? Now, obviously, I guess you could vote for better leaders, but so far for climate change, that hasn't had, had much effect yet. Or in the case of Marian Minisma, the founder of an organization called Urgenda, which stands for Urgent Agenda, uh, they sued the government and on December 20th, 2019, yesterday, they won the definitive final round. This has been a 12 year long ongoing battle. It started in the lower courts, then went through the Court of Appeals, and now came out the final decision of the Supreme Court and the Dutch government lost. This may be the first example on climate change where the people sued the government and won. Miriam actually gave a speech at Climate Launchpad 2019 in November, and we were actually lucky enough to get a short interview in as well. Her speech is one of the most inspiring climate action speeches I have ever seen so far. So shortening, it was quite actually a painful experience since there is just so much good stuff in there. So for the first time ever, we decided to make two versions, a longer version and a shorter version. For the longer version, uh, there's a link somewhere in this corner right now. And this is the shorter version. So thank you for giving us the time to, uh, for this interview. Uh, you just had your keynote speech out there and it was definitely very inspiring to everybody in the room. Um, there's, could you please tell me some more about what Urgenda does, just uh, for our viewers? Uh, Urgenda likes to speed up the energy transition, so we want to move to 100% renewables in 2030 and not in 2050. Yeah. And we do this in many different ways. 80-90% uh, of our work is on solutions, but most people know us because we have won a climate case against the Dutch government. And in 2013, we handed in the summons together with hundreds of people and a lot of young people to the court. We said, if government doesn't do enough, it's an unlawful act because you have a duty of care to protect your citizens. We have had to convince first the judges is a serious problem, really serious problem, because otherwise you can never win it. So you could say to the judge, there is an emergency situation. You see that things are changing much quicker than we expected. And for the Netherlands, as a low-level country, this really means a duty of care for your government. So the judges agreed. And on the 21st of June 2015, that was before the Paris Convention, they acknowledged that we were right. And nobody had expected it. And within half an hour, it was all over the world. And that expect of hope was very special because we did not expect it and we didn't expect at all that it would travel the world so quickly. Well, then they went to the Court of Appeal and on the 9th of October last year, the Court of Appeal said, Urgenda is right too. And that was really a blow in the face of the government because the first time they thought this was a uh, district court made a, made a mistake, but we simply go on and we ignore it. But then the second court said, well, it's not only because of you have an unlawful act because of tort law, but it's also unlawful because of human rights. So you have now a duty of care based on two different legs, you could say. One is civil Dutch law and one is international European human rights law. So we have two duties of care now and they said, well, you should simply do what's necessary and you should take your precautionary me measures. And the government had 29 um, grounds of appeal and they were all slashed. They appealed again. Uh, and before that, there is a final verdict, which is on the 20th of December. Uh, our main court always gets advice from a very high independent board. And this independent board, a few weeks ago, said, Urgenda is right too. So we have now more or less won three times. And on the 20th of December, they might need to reduce 25% next year. And at the moment, they are at 15%. So this will be another crisis in our ministry. But most of our activities are oriented on showing that things are already possible and already um, put them into practice too. So a kind of entrepreneurial NGO. 
Yeah. But we are from Solutions, so what we did um, when it was the fourth birthday of our court case, the 24th of June 2019, we went to The Hague with 700 organizations and we handed over a plan how they could still reach 25% in 2020. And all those 700 organizations also want to help to do this. And those plans are very different from driving a bit slower or making the water level a bit higher to all kinds of technical solutions and innovations, but all things that you can still do within one and a half year, and by now one year and a few months. Because uh, the IPCC, all those organizations, they're all aiming at 2050. And uh, you were talking about the sea level rise in the Netherlands. Could you describe what, what you mentioned earlier about how soon it's going to happen that most people are not expecting what, what's actually going to happen? Uh, because we emit so many greenhouse gases, you see that the um, uh, temperatures in the world are already rising and 90% um, of all heat is trapped into the ocean and the ocean also uh, goes into the ice, big ice parts of Greenland and the South Pole and then uh, it's melting much quicker than expected. And the committee said 10 years ago, well the worst case scenario is 1 meter 20 higher sea levels in 2100. And we're now 10 years later and our main institute says it could be now 2.5 to 3 meters in 2100. So the worst case went within 10 years from 1 meter 20 to 2.5 to 3. So 10 years ago in the Netherlands they thought that the sea level rise would be this century, worst case scenario, 1 meter 20. And now the worst case scenario 10 years later is 2.5 meters to 3 meters. And actually we are not ready for 2.5 to 3. If the sea level is a bit higher, then half of our country is gone. And now our main institutes are making all kinds of scenarios of what we need to do. Shall we build up and live on a kind of uh, uh, bigger areas? Or shall we have an enormous low level, level country with enormous dikes? Well, if it goes in this pace, they are not sure whether they will be able to do that quickly enough. So we hoped, of course, that the worst case is not happening, but if it goes so much faster within 10 years, yeah. I think in the next 10 years we will find out that it goes even faster than that. So uh, the Netherlands should look around whether we can stay where we are or ask all countries in the world to act much quicker. Yeah. And therefore you should give, the, um, I think, the example yourself. And Lead we are example. now, yeah, we are now one of the laggards and that's why yeah. I am trying to speed up the Netherlands. Because if we are not doing enough, how can we ask other big countries to do more? Yeah, because uh, this change, of course, is difficult. And part of the uh, difficulty here is that our system is very inflexible, the political system, the scientific system. Uh, one of the issues, perhaps, is that the scientists are still a bit too conservative and that the politicians don't take them seriously enough. Where would you say are the biggest uh, issues that need, to be, need most fixing? Like, what would you, how would you pro prioritize that? Well, we are moving now and we're moving in the right direction. So since the Paris Agreement, we have said, well, we want the temperatures not to rise beyond 1.5 degrees compared to 1850 or at least not above 2, two degrees. But we're still heading at the moment for 3 to 4. If you really want to stay with below 1.5 degrees, you actually have to stop emitting in 2030 and not in 2050. And that's a big difference. But if we go on until 2050, there is enough CO2 in the air to come close to 3 degrees. And then the politicians count on you to get the CO2 out of the air. But if you want to go a half a degree lower, you need pretty much all the agricultural land in the world to fill with trees. And then you go a half a degree lower. So I don't think that that is very feasible. And we'd better stop emitting now instead of counting on you for an impossible task. So we're not on the right track yet, and I think the problem is um, not of one actor. I think most people yeah. still think it's not that urgent, or if it would be yeah. that urgent, then the government would do more, wouldn't yeah. they? Yeah. Uh, and the government thinks, okay, I want to get to the next election, so yeah, exactly. let's put it to the next Short -term government. Short-term thinking. Yeah, but you do see a lot of uh, new inventions coming up. You see a lot of upscaling in the Netherlands, people who take solar panels on the roof. Yeah. Uh, electric driving is speeding up. Yeah. So you see it moving in the right direction. It starts to be a bit more exponential, which I like very much. But the funny thing is, uh, when I started with the first book, people said, well, big vehicles cannot go on hydrogen or anything else that should be bioenergy. And I could talk and ask them, no, I don't want bioenergy, can't we? 
invent something else before 2030, come on. And they all, all the specialists said, no, that's not going to happen. And five years later, with the third book, they all had changed and said, no, of course, there are lorries electric, we already have an electric tractor, so before 2030, it will all be electric. So things change much quicker than people think. And what I found out is that specialists cannot really think like this. Specialists think linear. They can, cannot think that it goes quicker than they, they knew it would go. And even if you point them out, look, last time you thought it would go like this and it went like that, shall you not change then now? They can't. Um, so we can still make it, but I think we maybe need a few big events, yeah. <laughs> uh, like maybe a dike that doesn't hold or a big, yeah. extremely big exactly. storm or whatsoever. And then we yeah. start thinking, maybe it's worse. Yeah, it's so closer like, than we think. Yeah, at the moment, if you look in Australia, those enormous fires and that the firefighters started to talk to yeah. their government and say, we have said this before and now yeah. we talk louder. This is an emergency and this is caused by climate change. Please start to act. Well, when you're, the people in your country start to ask governments to, to act, you see all those young people, more than a million on the streets. Well, this will add up and at a certain point, governments can't look away anymore and they have to act yeah. and it will be, too late in the sense that we will have changes, but it can be a lot worse. So I hope that they will start to act soon. And I think it's good to realize that the Netherlands is uh, the lowest, only Luxembourg is lower uh, on renewable energy in Europe. In absolute terms, we are number 34 in the world in emitting greenhouse gases. I think uh, your absolute emissions are not so relevant because of course China is the biggest emitter. They also have more, more than 1 billion people. We only have 17 million. And it's more fair to look at the emissions per capita, the emissions per person. And if you do that, then you will see that the Netherlands is in the top 10. And we emit a lot more per person than uh, China does and a lot more than India does. So we are amongst the biggest emitters in the world. Uh, you were mentioning how the Netherlands is one of the highest polluters per person per capita, but the Netherlands is a country we feed, like we're the second uh, biggest producer of food and other things for other countries. Uh, is it fair to compare, let's say, the Netherlands who feed, let's say, China and many other uh, European countries uh, by, for example, the number of citizens or how big our land is compared to the others? Well, you can look at it in many different ways, but the thing is that we are emitting a lot yeah, and that we're sure. not doing much to solve the problem because yeah. for everything that we do, there's also a more sustainable solution. So we, mm -hmm. we can have greenhouses on deep geothermal energy instead of sure, yeah. on gas, which yeah. we use currently. And gas has a problem, it creates CO2. So for everything that we do, there is a sustainable solution and we don't feel the heat enough. We, we like saying, well, it's a problem of China, yeah. or it's a problem of someone else, yeah, it's Trump, lot. it's always someone else and, and never yeah. yourself. And yeah. I think we should start to act ourselves because we cannot ask from the rest of the world to act quicker if we are the laggard of Europe. So before the next question, I want to very quickly uh, clarify something. In the Netherlands, um, when it comes to nitrous oxide pollution, there was a uh, governmental document that basically allowed business as usual to continue, uh, you, that anyone could emit as much as you want, because in the future there will be very efficient technologies that will absorb it all, which is obviously bullshit. And when a part of the government agreed that that's bullshit and immediately canceled it, suddenly uh, the agriculture and the construction uh, sectors couldn't get the permits that they need to continue their daily operations. And that caused a lot of chaos in our country. And so, for example, in the Netherlands right now, because of all the uh, yeah, stickstoff, these sticks of monoxide, the, what's it called in uh, nitrogen. English? Hi nitrogen, thank you. <laughs> the nitrogen oxides, uh, because of the court case now, all the farmers have, you know, are not allowed to produce more. The construction is stopped nationwide. Uh, what do you think about you know, what has happened? Like, I mean, it seems kind of counter, like, like a bit of a problem right now. How should you solve that? Like, is, is, it, is it the right approach to like, say, stop everything right now? Like, well, this is exactly the thing that our government does wrong. They don't act in time because this yeah. was known for years, years and for 10 years in a row, most specialists yeah. have said, we have a problem here, let's solve it. Yeah. And our government waits until the very, very last judge says, you really have to change. And then yeah. they start like, ah, emergency. Well, yeah. the emergency was already there. Yeah. Uh, and apparently it's necessary that the court uh, forces our government before they start to do something. And I yeah. don't like that, but 
um, the problem is not as big as they say, because now yeah. we have we drive 130 miles an hour or kilo, kilometers an hour, and we have to go back to 100. What's the problem? Yeah. Let's drive 100 until half of our cars are electric, and then you can back, go back to 130. Yeah. If that's your biggest problem in the world, ah. yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, it was very interesting to hear you talk today. Thank you. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did and think more people should see this, then please give this video a thumbs up. In case you haven't, please subscribe to our channel because that's how you get to see videos like these before anybody else does. Other than that, I wish you guys a pleasant day and till next time, see ya.